Hello, everyone. I am super excited to be interviewing today Lindsay Carruthers. Okay, we practice saying her last name and I failed every time. So she will say it properly and you will have it spelled in the show notes, but this was me doing my best. Lindsay is a life coach for creative humans. She helps, she helps them get unstuck and into action so that they can turn the creative dreams in their head into their reality, a life on their own terms. So uh, Lindsay per performed on Broadway and taught yoga for 10 years. Hey, I didn't know you were a yoga teacher like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uses embodiment techniques and conversational hypnosis to reprogram the brain so that her clients can be who they want to be in the world. Now, Lindsay has agreed to come to the podcast today to talk to us about how to lower anxiety by using self-hypnosis. And she's going to give us two incredibly easy to use tools that you can use right after you're done listening to this episode to help you lower anxiety by utilizing help um, self-hypnosis. I am so lucky she's also coming to help my CEOs embody the role of the CEO. So I get to have Lindsay twice with me this year. And I'm very grateful of that. Lindsay, thank you so much for being the podcast. Uh, welcome on board. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me, Olga. And I'm so good. I'm actually doing one of the techniques right now that I'm going to teach oh. everybody. And I can feel it. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. And there's just something I'm doing here and you can't even see it because I'm doing it under my desk. So yeah, I'm just so happy to be here. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you and give everybody something that they can apply immediately to start feeling better. Yeah. And you know what? Anxiety is such a hot subject. I think that all of us are not exempt to having it. I know I used to have really strong anxiety in my 20s. Who am I kidding? All the way to my 30s. Um, and it's not until recently that I really feel those are those days are in the past. Um, and I think much of why I am a mental health professional is because of my own experience with anxiety, how easy it is to feel anxious and nobody notices because it's all inside your head and you feel like you're dying. But on the outside, you look perfectly put together. So mm -hmm. I, what, 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 like, why don't you tell us maybe intro, introduce yourself a little bit. What do you do? I, like I gave your bio, but I want you to just tell us from your own words and, and maybe lead us into what brought you into wanting to do this work. Yeah. So a lot of people come to me when they feel stuck. I, like you said, I have a background on Broadway, teaching yoga, and I always found like I was oscillating between this performance life and then this holistic grounding life. So like high highs and then coming back to yoga to ground myself. So it was sort of like this dance mm -hmm. between the two things. And then when COVID happened, I... I say fitness was canceled and theater was canceled. So I moved home and there was just a lot. It was kind of a pause for me to figure out, okay, what do I want my life to be? What's next? I always felt like the yoga and the acting, if they had a baby, what would the baby be? And because I felt like when I would go into acting rooms, there was so much excitement and heightened activated nervous systems, this performance piece. And then in yoga, it was, I was sort of missed the excitement of that or missed, but loved the grounding and the healing and felt like that was such important work. So I feel like now I've meshed the two and it's my coaching practice. It's my mountain. And I started working with my coach in 2020 and it just helped me sort of surf the pandemic. I felt like I was able to ride a wave mm -hmm. and I never felt for a lot of, I mean, I like to say this too. I was lucky. I had my health. I a lot of factors went into me sort of being able to take the reins versus feeling like a victim to the pandemic or like it was happening to me. And now I just want to bring that to everybody everywhere. Like, oh, what, what would it feel like to just be able to feel like you are in control of what you can control? You're in your own driver's seat. So that's really what brought me to this work. And I'm just always looking for what's useful. Like, oh, what's useful? What's a fast way to feel better immediately? What can be with something that I can give somebody and then they can apply it immediately and they feel the effects. So that's why I love this work, especially the sort of hypnosis aspect and changing the brain and changing habits 
And that's why I love it. Cause it's just, we could apply it today. Like we can make change now. It doesn't have to be like 20 years of therapy. Yeah. yeah. Screw mm-hmm. that. I mean, that's helpful <laughs> too, but how can we implement things now? I think is a question that everybody has because, <clears throat> and I speak for myself, when you are in a moment of anxiety, it feels so freaking uncomfortable in your mind and in your body that all you want is a way out, right? Like you just want to get out of there. Now I teach mindfulness similar to what you probably do. The, the grounding energy for me is essential. And I have managed very well my own mind by being grounded. So I, when I studied a bit of hypnosis, I've realized it was a form of meditation. I'm like, oh, I know this thing. I, 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 this, this makes sense to me. And uh, to my surprise, the biggest from that, from this approach, the biggest tool to cope with anxiety was actually to feel, right? Sit down and feel the feeling, which was the complete opposite of what my brain thought the solution was. So at first sounded a bit crazy. And I'm like, are you insane? (laughs) This is what I do not want to feel. So what do you mean feel the feeling? And uh, I obviously, I've been teaching it now for 14 years, but I first had to practice it. And I understand that resistance that we might feel So how do you think hypnosis, self-hypnosis could reach that gap between the person who doesn't want to sit down and meditate and sit in stillness when you're literally rushing through your mind, and but it's also not going to fall asleep? Because I think some people might think hypnosis is about like, focus, focus, fall asleep. I'm going to manage your brain and put some great messaging in there. And then that's it. You're done. How you knowing that you're a yoga teacher? How you describe like maybe the, a bit of a the gap or the difference between one yeah. and the other? Good question. So med- they do sort of feel similar, and hypnosis is about putting your mind in a suggestible state where you can actually make change. So that's why it's like mm. ooh, and the hip, you know, when there's like a show and there's a there's someone's getting hypnotized and it's like lift your arm and then they're lifting their like it's really actually priming your brain to be in a suggestible state where change can be made. Whereas meditation is a little bit more about grounding, sort of maybe coming back to a mantra or coming back to your breath. That meditation is the practice of, oh, I wandered off and I come back without judging myself. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't make it a problem that my mind wandered or that I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. And I just come back to it when, when I noticed that I wandered it's the practice of coming back, coming back really gently. Whereas hypnosis, I love that you said this because it is actually about activating the problem state. So that's what I'm saying when we talk about, when we talk about a problem, we're not necessarily activating the part of the mind that feels the problem. So I, we might be like, oh, I, have anxiety. I just have anxiety. It's like, that's just who I am. Like that's kind of talking about it versus, yeah, oh, when that, I walked into the room and I saw my boss's face, like, ooh, I really, I felt really hot. I started to get tingles, like my face, like it kind of felt like the water was rising. So we want to start to get into the actual quote problem state because it lights up that part of our brain, which is also speaking to what you said. We actually do want to feel it so that we can change it. Because if we're just talking about it, we could just talk about it for years and never change, but we want to activate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually want to go, so I take my clients into is we actually activate the problem state unless they're already there, unless they come to the call and they're like, oh my God, I'm so anxious about this thing. Then you're already in it. So we don't have to do step one, but if they're already in it, great. We'll just do some tech, do the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Go to work. But if they're, if it's something that they want to change, that feels like a problem in their life, we do want to go in specifically the last time they felt it. What was that like in your body? So that's the feelings piece. We actually do need to feel it because like you said, our nervous system, our programming is embodied. So we actually have to feel it if we're going to change it. So that's what, that's the first step. I love the concept suggestible mind. Is that what you said? Yeah. Cause then it yeah. means it's open to a suggestion. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I have the concept of anxiety as being really stubborn. Your brain is like, no, but we really have to think about the risk. And you're like, I know I'm trying, but like, you know, you can't think. So it's not open to suggestions, but when you are being guided through the self-hypnosis, 
I'm guessing we're intentionally bringing the emotion so that we can be in that state of feeling unsafe. I like to use uh, the word unsafe as opposed to anxiety, because what what's anxiety really signaling to your body is that you're not safe, whether you have a thought that you're not safe or you're physically unsafe. And from that perspective, then when you're having the feeling, you suggest a new alternative of response. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Uh huh. And I also want to offer to anyone listening that just sort of plant the seed that anxiety could be a habit where it's just a highway in your brain between something that triggers you and the feeling of anxiety. And it's just like a highway that's really, really paved and there's cars driving on it back and forth. And it's just really wired for this trigger and anxiety. Those two things have met at the party and now they're besties and they're just used to being together. And we can start to put a roadblock in between a trigger and anxiety or un- feeling unsafe. And we can just start to, if we, if we plant a roadblock on that highway, then the cars have to find a new path. Like there has to, something new, they will start to carve out a new path. And once they do that, we can choose the path they want. So stimulus and anxiety, if we want to change it, we can think, oh, I want to feel confident. Like if that's the thing they want to feel instead, like your CEOs. So mm-hmm. it's, we can start to pave that highway. So it's just about making a change. And, but we want those two things to meet at the party. Like, ooh, new, new client and confidence. Maybe at the party right now, they're on opposite sides of the room. We want them to see each other. New client and confidence or big presentation confidence. And then they can start to get closer at the party. And then now they're touching. And now those cars can drive on this highway. And now that's sort of a bigger ball of neurons than trigger and anxiety. So we just want to start to create a new, it's just like a new highway. And so, yeah, we can put those roadblocks in once we're feeling it. And so we can go through that. Oh, I love it. So should I give you an example? Is that, would that sure. be the easiest way? And then you walk me through it. So yeah. my assistant, she's going to love that I'm using her. She has a big fear because you said highway. I'm like, oh, I know somebody who's afraid of driving on the highway. So my assistant will do, will drive hours if she need, needs to, to completely avoid the highway. Because once upon a time, she had a car accident while driving on the highway. So now her brain, the trigger is highway driving. So when, when she thinks of driving and highway, she immediately relates that to accident happening. Mm-hmm. So clearly feels unsafe and chooses every alternative to not have a highway accident. So in that context, would that be a good example? Yeah. This? Like what Such would you be saying? Thing. If I was Sam sitting here telling you that this is a problem, we would have to, uh, I imagine, walk her through the last time she felt that fear of driving the highway. And then what happens? Yeah, this is such a good example. Cause we could think that we could find that moment of the accident. We could actually go back to that moment. Cause what we're doing is finding, you're right, the trigger. Where are we gonna, cause we want to kind of copy almost like a copy and paste. We want to find the moment where the, the fear kicks in. So I would ask her, you know, when, when's the last time? Cause afraid of the highway is sort of like, a tabletop or an umbrella. So I would ask her, how do you know you're afraid of the highway? When's the last time specifically that happened? And it may be like, ooh, yesterday I thought maybe I would try it and I went and I went to drive onto the highway and I saw the sign and I and I froze. And that's the moment. We want to look for body language or and then this happened. Like there's always a moment where the trigger kicks in. So even if we go back to that time that she had the accident, I would ask her to walk me through that. Okay, let's go back. So we're back there. You're driving. This is the the memory, the moment that it happened. Walk me through that. So I would have her say, okay, I'm driving and things are going fine. And then I look to the side, there's this car. And so that moment of like, when there's a- Her body tenses up, she's in memory, living the memory. Yeah. Essentially in her body, physically feeling the fear or the yeah. shock or the impact of having been in the accident. Okay. Yeah. So we can do this with this. We can use this to change memories too. So we can go back to that. So I would say, okay, stop. So we find that. And then I would ask her how it feels in her body. 
Like how, how is that? And it might be like, I was like, I was like trapped, pulling back, bracing for impact. There's usually some sort of signal. Hands through the chest, their hands through the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hands through chest, maybe like protect, putting my hands up to protect. It's all, a lot of times leaning back. It's interesting. So yeah, we want to find that. And then we might even say, let's crank it. Can you, and can you feel that moment, how it felt in that moment? And it's like, yes. And if they're like, not really, I'd be like, okay, we're going to really go into it. Really what it felt like in that moment. And then we're going to, we're going to light up that part of the brain where that fear is activated. It's like, yeah, okay. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like that tension in my chest. I'm feeling the leaning back. And then what we want to do is shake it out. So this is where we go to step two. So we actually do want to dissociate from the problem state. So we want to shake it out. There's two things that I want to give everybody today of where we would add in this sort of shaking up the brain so that the problem state isn't the only part that's lit up now. We want to light up the whole brain. And this is the suggestible place. Once we light up the whole brain, we calm the nervous system down. Then we want to ask, how do you want to feel instead? So this it's kind of like thought work or the model or any other modalities that you use of, okay, now that you're feeling safe, now that you're okay. How do you want to feel instead? And it might be like, I want to feel like, like when you're on the highway, how do you want to feel? I want to feel calm. I just want to feel like it's not a big deal. Like it's just right. whatever. And you'll see people go, it's just a big deal. It's different body language. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at, I'm looking for the body language so that I can start to mirror it. And this is where, okay, so if it's no big deal and what does it feel like when it's no big deal and you're calm and you're driving on the highway and you're seeing the road go by and you're seeing other cars and it's, oh, that would feel nice. And I have my hands on the wheel and yeah, and I would feel like it's no big deal. And we just want to light up that part of the brain where, oh, what does it feel like in your body when something's no big deal? And then we just embody that. And that's the embodiment piece because our nervous system, this is an embodied practice. It's not just in our brain. So we're lighting up the part of the brain that feels no big deal. Oh yeah, I'm calm, whatever. And so we're just doing this over and over. We're creating this new, we're lighting up the part of the brain that feels calm relax. Like it's no big deal. And even my voice, you can see it's yeah. kind of like I'm going. starting to feel really like, oh, yeah. can you tell me so more? Here. I like this thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, that's where we, we meet the subconscious. It's sort of, it's down here. It's relaxed. And we feel it in the body. And then once we're feeling that, we say, okay, let's copy and paste this feeling onto the highway. So let's go back to that moment. Or the last time you we're going to go on the highway and you felt the fear. Let's go back to that moment. So you're driving and you see the highway and now you just go right onto the highway and you're feeling calm. What would that be like? What would that be like to feel calm and you're on the highway? And now we're dri- and now it's like, "Oh, that would be nice." It's like, "Yeah, that's right. What would be what would that be like?" So now we just are carving this new pathway of what it's like to be on the highway and to feel calm. And we're just going to copy and paste that. We could even yeah, go I mean, the thing about the like the trigger in the moment, like she was bracing for impact, but we actually do want to look at moments where she then goes to be on the highway and she feels the fear. Cause that moment of impact was like, rightfully so she felt fear because she had a collision, but now we want to go back. We really do want to find the memory of when she's like, what is making the, when, when's the last time she thought about the highway or she went to consider the highway and she got scared. So we want to copy and paste this onto that. So now it's like, Oh yeah. Highway equals no big deal. I just go on the highway. So now we we carve that we're paving that road in the brain. And we just want to keep doing that. And then we want to go, okay, now in the future, imagine you're in your car, you see the highway, now you're driving on. What would that be like to just be a person that goes on the highway and is calm? And it would be like, oh, that would be so great. I could get places so much faster. And yeah, and I'm driving and it's all I don't, you know, I, I can just get places where, and it's great. And they're then they're just explaining it and we're just reinforcing it. And it might feel repetitive, but that's how we make a new change in the brain. We repeat it over and over. And then we're even like, we're driving, it's in front of you and it's not back here. Right. You can't, you can't drive forward and be back here at the same time. So we want to just, yeah, no big deal. So I'm even like, if you watch this, you see like my body language is like, it's no big deal. This is so, you can't do this with your hands and pull back at the same time. Those two parts of your brain can't wire at it's the like same very time. Hard. <laughs> yeah. 
So I want to say, okay, let me just recap these steps because if the person is not working with you, if the person is next time, this listener is like, shit, I'm anxious. I'm going to remember what Lindsay and Olga were talking about. I mean, that's, I mean, that state of fear. So they're in physically fear. Like I'm afraid of mice, for example, like terrified of mice. So next time I see a mouse and I'm like, and I live in the country, so I see them. Okay. So next time I see, oh my God, I don't want to see, why did I mention it? Um, so I'm in the state, right? So yeah, I get yeah. myself into a state and I remember, okay, I can bring my brain to a suggestible state right now. Like, where am I feeling this fear? Like if I'm on my own, where am I feeling this fear? And what would it feel like to be calm instead? Or what, how would I like to feel when I see a mouse next time? It would be like, yeah. So I'm first calm. I would want to, first I would want to give you those uh, to disassociate. We want to do those techniques first Okay. to get out, to sort of shake up the problem state. Cause right. If you're, if you're thinking oh, right. about how and shake it. Yeah. yeah. So physically shake it. Yeah. So do you want to, we could walk through one now. So if anybody's listening or for you, even we could just okay. do one of those even right okay. now. So that's for some, if somebody's, if you're feeling something coming in hot and it feels really strong and it's really present. So just take something on your desk. So if you're listening, yeah, grab something scrunchy. Great. I have this little thing of lotion. And what we're going to do is you're just going to follow me and we're just going to go side to side. Yep. And you're just crossing your midline. So what you're doing is just putting it in your right hand, crossing your midline, switching it to your left hand, and then you're just crossing it across your body and you're just going side decide and we're just going to do this a few times so i'm doing this does. immediately after being in a state of anxiety i'm passing yeah. from right to left yep. right in front of my middle line uh-huh and you could go out to the side yep and you we just want to cross the midline because what this is doing is lighting up both sides of the brain it's called a bilateral pass instead of just being activated on one side of the brain. On one side. So when yeah. I'm in anxiety mode, there's one part of the brain that's lit up. Yep. And now that, that anxiety. Okay. Yeah. That because that anxiety is one ball of neurons on one side of your brain. So we want to light up both sides, okay. which allows us to have access to more of our brain. So why this works too is when we are in fight or flight, which is anxiety, fear, we literally are tunnel visioned to the problem. So we actually do narrow in, our focus narrows. And what this does is expands our focus. Because oh. we can't be like, we can't be like zoned in so hard on a problem and expanding the, like we just can't light up those two things at the same time. Contraction and expa expansion don't happen simultaneously. Yeah, so we just want to counteract that. And this is so simple. Like I said, I was doing this before we got on the call. Yeah. I was like, Ooh, I'm excited, you know, activated. And I was like, Ooh. I have more access to my brain. I'm just going to light up both sides. I like side. so many people get anxious before a Zoom meeting or so many people, not maybe not anxiety, you need kills anxiety, but like you said, that excitement feels like fear at times. So this yeah. is totally do underneath the desk. Yeah, I was doing it mm -hmm. right now. I can't even really see you. My teacher gives this to students that they do at school. So kids are having you know problems with anxiety at school, just under their desk. And you don't even necessarily have to be passing something, an object. You could just even do it with your hands, like bring your fingers together at the center and then left, okay. right. Mm -hmm. Yep, but we just want to pass the midline. That's the whole point. How long are we doing this? Until something changes physically or until our brain is more calm or until what? Yeah, you could do it as long as you want. You could do it until you feel a change. You could do it while you're doing an activity. Like right now, Olga, for you, how do, how do you feel now just from doing this? Um, yeah, you totally interrupted my thinking of the mouse, right? And like now if I've uh, talked about the mouse, I feel the energy come back up and I'm like, why did I mention it? But it's, it is distant from when I said, oh, now that I mention it, for sure I'm going to see one, right? Like that will rise up the temperature in my body. Yeah. Would, and yeah. yeah. And that's not a problem. And if it comes back, we go, oh, we just do this again. <clears throat> or we can do this other technique I can show you even like shaking like shaking that's why trauma shakes you know it's really good just to shake the body you could get up and do a three minute dance party Ooh. but even just anything that activates both sides of the brain so that's moving both sides of the body crossing the midline yeah so kind we're shaking to, our hands fast yeah. we're uh sort of like giving ourselves uh, the, the motion of a hug moving our arms across right and left yeah awesome. wow and here's another here's another one too so 
this one's really simple. You could even do this while you're talking to somebody. So this one is just find the point of focus. So I'll do this with you. So you just find something to look at, focus your gaze on one point. It could be an object or just find a focal point. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to bring in your peripheral vision. So you're focusing on one thing. And now you're just going to open your awareness to the walls on either side of you. Mm -hmm. As you breathe, you keep looking at that one point. And you're just noticing the walls. And then starting to take your awareness even beyond the walls. Maybe that's outside or into the next room. And then as you keep your gaze on that one focal point, bring your awareness even behind you as if you could see behind you. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And now just coming back to your peripheral. And then maybe see if there's anything else you can notice on either side of you. If there's a door or a window, taking in the floor and the ceiling. Wow, I'm feeling so calm. Yeah. Yeah. And then just I back. literally fall asleep. <laughs> that was so yeah. calming. And my eyes were yeah. open. Like, ah, uh, tell me more. Yeah. Well, so recap. I'm anxious. <laughs> I think I've got to shake these off. So we do either one of these three things that we did shaking, passing right to left, or this one. Mm -hmm. I'm a visual human. So I can see why this one would be like very powerful for me. And what goes next? Is this where the mind is suggestible? Yeah. Is so now when we can another... plant new seeds. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I'm feeling so calm now. We go, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. now you're feeling calm. Now that you're, okay, now that we sort of calm the nervous system, we're in a more neutral space. Now we can think, how would you like to feel when you see a mouse? Like, well, what would you? Like, you what if, when I see a squirrel, like, oh, they're so cute, you know, move on. Yeah. yeah, and that's like, even like, oh, they're so cute. And look, they're out here. It's like, oh, they're so cute. I can just <laughs> move on. Yeah, so it's like, that you know how and how do you want to feel like oh even like what is that what is that in your body like oh they're so cute like and you can just move on is that like whatever is that like no there is love in my heart like I, I see squirrels <laughs> like tiny little ones from the tree in front of my office and I stop what I'm doing to just look at them because I genuinely think they're like always busy planning their next thing and like you know I think they're cute they're busy yeah. working so there is like a, a feeling of love <laughs> for them yes. admiration almost yeah. So okay. when you're feeling yeah, admiration, so when you're feeling love and admiration, what is that like in your body? How do you know when you're feeling love and admiration? It feels I have a smile. There's like a little bit of water in my eyes because tears of like I connected to love. Oh, yeah. Man, I love this. Yeah. So it's like even like bringing a smile. It's like, oh, yeah. So you're just like, you're just like feeling love and feeling appreciation, even like right here. Oh, they're out here you're connecting with them maybe from far away maybe right here but it's like love like a warmness tears in your eyes so you've yeah. interrupted my thought of fear for miles at mice you've shake shaken that energy you brought me to a calm state and now you made me think of something i actually think is cute yeah like uh, what, how do you know when you feel love? yes okay. yeah like how do you know when you feel admiration what is that like in your body when you're feeling admiration for something or someone what is that like that's a great question it feels like um feel like warm in my chest maybe or like um light there's lightness yeah even this is good you just did this with your hands and for people listening it's kind of like oh just like throwing her hands up like light yeah, yeah. so let's just do that even because I like to mirror what I see so because this is this is how your subconscious is like light and it can be here and it's like ah yeah yeah like lightness. i was throwing confetti up you know to me that's <laughs> yeah like, confetti <laughs> yeah like squirrels <laughs> yeah <laughs> confetti like celebrating that person or that thing yeah there's a lightness so now that you're feeling that and you're smiling i can see it on your face yeah so now we're just gonna go and we're gonna copy and paste so you're feeling this and i invite you to keep doing this because this is how your body is expressing okay. it just yeah, because we're lighting up this part of your brain of admiration and your smile. And now we're just going to think about being a mouse. 
And what would that be like? If you were just like, there he is, whenever you see a mouse come in, like a little mouse walks into the room. And what would that I be like? I feel the calmness and the excitement. And I feel my brain like, no, 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 you should be fighting this. And I'm like, but yeah. this is great. Why would I be fighting this? This is a better feeling. Yeah. Okay, it's all me. Yeah. And that's how you know you're changing when your brain's like, because it's a new pathway, oh, it's a you. new highway. Mm, that's how you know your brain is changing because you're love now, it. oh, this and mouse, it's like these two things never were connected in our brain, but now they are. Now they're starting to wave and at each other. Brain just offer me a new vision, which I saw the other summer, last summer, which were baby mice. And they were actually cute. <laughs> My fear, I was like, but they're cute, but I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. it's offering me like, remember, baby, baby mice are cute. And I'm like, okay, they yeah. are cute. Yeah, like they're so little, little babies. So now we're just, yeah, when you see a mouse and it's like, ooh. And we didn't really go into like an exact moment of when you saw a no. mouse, but we could just yeah. think like, oh, now that you're feeling this, right? And you're like feeling warm and they're little babies and they're just little. And now you can think, okay, now let's go to the future. Like later today, let's say you see a mouse and you're just like throwing up confetti because you love little cute little things. And they're just little cute. <laughs> yep. And your brain's going to be like, wait, wait. And you're going to go, yeah, yeah. And we're changing. And this is how we change is we just create this new pattern where you're feeling warm you're feeling smiley and appreciation oh Looking you got me i feel yeah. it yeah so what's different oh, now you said the key is repetition and i like that because i mean anxiety is repetition you know like you have the same thought over and over and over or you have the same response towards driving on the highway over and over and over you can think about it as your automatic response highway fear no right like the behavior then is um shaped by the thought. So mm -hmm. I do think that I was actually teaching something today that I think is important for people to hear here. Most of us want a quick fix, fast fix. Okay. And we're like, give me a pill and I'm out of anxiety. And that feels great. I remember when my doctor, my family doctor, who knew I was a yoga teacher and a mindfulness teacher said to me, here's your prescription for, so I'm like, give me something, man. Like I feel too anxious. I was 23 years old. I will never forget. And I was already teaching mindfulness, thankfully. And he wrote me a prescription that said, go back into your meditation cushion. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? That's the solution? He's like, yeah. And I was so disappointed. So for those of you who are listening and thinking, okay, how is this going to quickly fix me? There isn't a quickly fix to something you've been doing for a long time, especially when it belongs to uh, when it comes to your thinking patterns and your brain, it takes two years for a child to walk. We don't give up on them when they take the first two steps and fall down. And we're like, well, we gave you a chance. See you later. This didn't work. We will sit there until it works. Like I will never give up on my child walking. If he's capable, if he's got two legs and he's, you know, capable and able to walk, we wouldn't say this didn't work fast enough. He's never going to walk. We would we'll just expect that. He's going to fall a couple hundred of times and eventually he's going to master running. I want you guys to think of how long you've had anxiety as a response to a trigger or to life in general and how this technique that honestly is simple, but you just brought me to think of mice without bringing my shoulders up and wanting to like puke. So it works. And in that sense, it was fast, but I know I've had a long life of fearing mice and i know my brain is going to find another opportunity to be sneaky and tell me but we're supposed to be afraid of them so repetition being key here it's got to be one of your steps repeat it and repeat it don't have the mindset that if it doesn't work right away it doesn't work it's just you haven't done it enough but you mm -hmm. agree yeah and that's the copy and paste piece that's the okay we're feeling, and that's why you could go through, now that we, I've walked you through this, I would even offer to you that it may be easier than you think when you think about mice or when you see mice, there may be like, oh, because we've actually allowed those two things to make contact in your brain. Those, thi th those things have now met each other of cute, like admiration and love and mice. We've started to create that, but it's true. We do want to keep reinforcing it. And that's why we just, we could keep copying and pasting it It's from, okay, now let's think of another time when you see a, my, a mice or mouse, <laughs> we're going to copy and paste it. So there is, we want to just reinforce this 
and already there's been a change. So just even feeling, ooh, okay, there's this change now. And if I keep practicing this, and you could even, that's why I love, I love the embodiment piece of the gesture of confetti or here, because you could even practice that. You wouldn't, you don't have to. On its own, my brain will remember it. Yes. Your brain's going to remember it. So it's going to be, okay, maybe it's like, maybe it's 5% less, maybe it's 10% less, but it's like this technique. Yeah. It's Uh. like, what if you could, could instead of a pill? What if this could be, this could be the pill it's actually, and it's actually your own chemicals in your own brain. Love it. Which is, yeah. And I also would like to offer too, kind of talking about something that's happened for a long time, right? Something that I've, I've had anxiety for a long time. I want to offer too, that sometimes when we make those big statements of I'm a person that does this, or I'm a person that just can't, or has this, I'm stuck. I have this problem. I'm always overwhelmed. That's when we start to take a na- a verb, something that was a process where something happened and then we felt overwhelmed. Something happened and then we had anxiety. That's a verb, right? That's just something that's happening. And when we reinforce it over and over, it becomes a noun. So what once was a process now becomes a program. I am this and we own it so much. Yeah, and it's like, that's the, pro- okay, that's the program versus Oh, I can just get back into the process and I can reprogram all those moments that become, that feel like they become just who I am. I love this. We can reprogram our brain. And like in the coaching world, we use the word rewiring the brain because it's true. It can happen. It, it happens. That's what we do for our clients. We help them rewire. And my friends, you listening here, you just got a free session on how to do exactly that i'm pleased to not for a second underestimate the power of the tool because you got it for free in a podcast we're here yeah. to give great value and i know Lindsay, you really want to come and bring it to my people and i just experienced it firsthand so i hope if you were listening you started thinking okay for olga is mice but for me what is it spiders like how many of you scream when you see a spider Mm-hmm. Uh, how many of you think the thought of a snake or I don't know dirt if you have OCD like this is what we do when we treat OCD in therapy we teach them a new ritual it's a new response to the ritual that they have going on that normally involves some self-harming so uh, I love that you said anxiety is a habit I certainly agree with that fact and it's a habit that can be broken and a new one can be built. And this is a great aim to doing that. Was that the, the two tools or that's one tool? That was it. Those are, those are two. Yeah. So you could do yeah. per, the peripheral vision. So that's the, that's the first one. Well, we, oh, that's my we did them. Yeah. The peripheral, that's just peripheral vision. And it puts you into parasympathetic nervous system. So it actually, and my teacher says, shift out and shut up. Cause it is like going from being inside your head to shifting your focus out. And it's so simple. You could be doing it while you're talking to somebody. I did this the other night. I was going out with two new friends and bringing my boyfriend. And I was like, oh, are we, you know, nervous host. I was feeling like new friends. And I, there was a moment I noticed I was having a little bit of anxiety at the dinner table. And I just looked at them and I just started to bring in the walls <laughs> and I was doing it. And they, you know, like, they don't know. And it just allows me to really focus on them, right? Because we're choosing mm-hmm. one point of focus. And I was like, oh yeah, no, right, right. Okay, yeah. You're back. Just, you interrupted yeah. the way of thinking. I love this for people with social anxiety. What an amazing tool because you don't look awkward while doing it, right? Like you don't have to look yeah. down to your pants. You could be looking at the person <laughs> yeah. who's talking to you while you're also inviting the peripheral view and imagining your back. I'm gonna definitely be using that one because yeah. I love it. It was it was so grounding. Again, I'm visual. But I think the majority of humans who are anxious are vi- are, are um, visual because we visualize what we're afraid of all the time. <laughs> so we might all really enjoy just being with your eyes wide open, engaging, while also calming yourself down. I absolutely love that example. Lindsay, mm-hmm. this was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. And I'm glad we went through a couple of scenarios. Yeah, because I know, like I know anxiety, I was telling is a big subject um, in this in this podcast specifically. I know my episodes that relate to anxiety are often like highly um, downloaded and people want to have tools. 
But I feel that this is even better. Like it's not just for anxiety. Sorry, not not better, but it's not just related to anxiety, to overwhelm, to feeling like you've got too many things in your mind, not enough time to just take that time to like have a new relationship with time. When you think of your schedule, you can literally use this tool for anything that takes away your peace of mind. Love it. Mm-hmm. How do I get a hold of you? What, where are you at? Like, tell us a little bit about the work you do and how do people, if they want to do this type of work with you, how could they get to do so? Yeah. So mostly Instagram and Facebook. So my Instagram is at Lindsay Brett. So L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-B-R-E-T-T. And then Facebook is Lindsay Brett Carruthers. So same Lindsay Brett and then C-A-R-O-T-H-E-R-S. I also have a website that I'm revamping. So if they go there, today on January when we're <laughs> when we're doing this well I'm, they want <laughs> yeah I'm revamping it so by the time this airs I will have it up so lindsaybrightcarruthers.com yeah. and you can find me there and I'll have, I have a contact form also dms I have my email on my instagram also you work with people yeah. all over the world men women doesn't matter yeah okay awesome yep. all genders all over the world I have somebody in Germany I have people in LA um that's not all over the world, but the, yeah, different time zones and it's one-on-one. I work one-on-one and perfect. yeah, coaching. And where are you? You're not in New York anymore. You were telling me, where are you now? No, I'm in West Virginia, West so Virginia. in the mountains. Yeah. Uh-huh. So also awesome. with my and other things. <laughs> other <laughs> creatures. Snakes, um, yeah, creatures. I'm not afraid of almost any other creature. I don't think, I mean, I grew up in South America, I'm exposed to a whole yeah. bunch of things. The spiders do not spook me the least. I think it's funny when somebody like my husband screams at the side of a spider, but he thinks I'm crazy for screaming at the side of a mouse. And I'm like, well, maybe we'll see what happens. Well, by force, I've been exposed to them more living here. I've been here for three yeah. years and I've had to see them more. And I have noticed my, my fear is far less. When I went to New York last May and I saw rats, I was like able to watch them without freaking like we were feeling like my heart was going at a thousand. So I know, yeah. I know it's already by exposure, which is also so nice to, for everybody to, to hear us say, like exposing yourself to the, to the thought that makes you anxious or to the actual thing inevitably will lead to you having less of a high intense response of fear. Yeah. Right? You get to survive it and you're like, oh, I survived it. Right, so your brain keeps that as evidence. Like, oh, the rats didn't eat me. Okay, I could possibly. First time I saw a rat in New York, everybody and the rat looked at me like I had two heads. I'm like, <laughs> they're like, the rat. That rat's like, I'm just going to work. Like, I have the rat was like in her two <laughs> legs, looking at me like, whoa, why are you screaming? Like, fuck off. And so was all every other New Yorker on the street. And I was like, what is that? Is that normal? what the heck I was a very abnormal one so I decided I will never live in New York <laughs> like this is too much for me uh that thank you Lindsay so you're, much you're, you're gonna be seeing them with love and admiration because you changed your brain so <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe I would reconsider going to India where they worship <laughs> them and feed them there, milk. exactly there you go okay, thank you thank so you so, so much. much see you guys next Monday I hope you enjoyed that episode. I am so happy you're here and I'm not done with you. Guess what? I want to invite you to come join me for five days of live coaching and teaching where you and I are going to clean your mind and your mindset from the toxicity of your inner mean voice. So if you feel that you're constantly discouraged, if you're lacking self-confidence because the voice inside your head tells you you're just not good enough, you're not that good, and all the other crap the brains are constantly telling us, I invite you to come join me inside Detox the Mind, five hours of coaching, you and I. It starts March 27th and it goes all the way until the 31st for $97. That's an amazing deal. It's a great investment in your brain. You will not regret it. You will meet wonderful people and you will have a journal to work along with me, recorded calls of our our coaching calls, and you have me. 
you will be able to ask me any question you have about your own thoughts and your mind and we're going to switch together your mean inner voice for a confident inner voice head over to the show notes and sign up mm-hmm.